received a letter like this one, maybe from your insurance company or from the government or maybe from a retailer that you do business with telling you that your information has been compromised? Well, there's two types of people in this room. Those that have been hacked and know it and those that just don't know it yet. <laughs> I know about hackers because I used to be one. Instead of going to class in college, I spent all my time connected to the university network. I taught myself how the internet worked. I learned new operating systems. I didn't always have permission to access those systems. But I was stimulated by intellectual curiosity, learning new things, seeing if I could rise to the challenge. But times have changed. Now hackers are in it for the money. And cybercrime is a huge problem. You know, there's a big problem when there's an entire magazine dedicated to it. Anybody here subscribe to Data Breach today? <laughs> so, somebody reads this, apparently. Cybercrime is expected to cost the global economy over $500 billion this year. So just to put that in perspective, if it were a corporation, it would have the third largest market cap right behind Apple and Google. And guess what? It's only getting worse. Cybercrime is projected to cost $2.5 trillion a year by 2020. Now you may be sitting there thinking, that is a ridiculous number. Can that possibly be true? Let's look at just one incident. Last year, the US Office of Personnel Management was hacked by nation state hackers that were stealing information about employees of the US government. Our government spent $300 million on just that one incident. And that's your money. That's a tax that we all pay. That's money that's not going to improve our roads, to improve education, or to benefit us in any way. And it's not just the government. Every time you use your credit card, every time you buy something online, virtually any business transaction that you perform you're paying a tax for cybercrime. Who are these bad guys that are targeting us? Is it the proverbial techno wizard that lives on a 50-story glass building, makes his fingers go like this and compromising the internet? Is it the hoodie-wearing teenager living in their parents' basement that maybe needs to take some extra vitamin D or something? I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Really, there's three types of cybercrime hackers out there. At the bottom, the least sophisticated, they have what I like to call the ankle biters. And these are the guys that maybe hang out in an internet cafe and just send out email after email, hoping something sticks. If you ever were surprised to find out you have family that's royalty and wants to leave you millions of dollars, <laughs> that's from these guys, right? Then we have the professional cyber criminals. They wake up in the morning, they go to work, sit in front of their computer, and try to steal from you. It's a little bit like the mafia. And in fact, there's a whole cybercrime ecosystem out there that these guys are part of. Oftentimes, they'll specialize in spamming and creating malicious software or viruses. They might specialize in money laundering. They even have online forums where all the cybercriminals hang out and they advertise their services to each other. Some even often 24-7 technical support. It's kind of ridiculous. At the top of the heap are a smaller group, but really the most sophisticated attackers out there. These are the nation state hackers. They're working on the direction of governments. Sometimes they're wearing military uniforms and sitting in a government building, but many times they're not. And they're also out there hacking, a lot of times for political purposes, but some governments are also hacking to steal intellectual property as well. Well, where does this stuff happen? So the internet is a little bit like an iceberg. We've got what we can see above the surface, and that's the public web. That's everything that Google indexes and can return in search results. And then we have the deep web. That's the stuff that's hidden, but still connected to the internet. Think of your Amazon purchasing history or a private message board on Facebook that you belong to. Not everybody can see it, but it's out there. And then we have the dark web, the mysterious, elusive dark web. The media loves to talk about the dark web. Nobody really knows what the dark web is. Well, it's just another set of web servers 
that are hidden behind layers of encryption. It's meant to be difficult to find, and it's meant to be able to protect from people stumbling across it. And there's a lot of bad stuff that happens on the dark web, but it's just a small piece of the overall internet. But cybercrime is everywhere. Evil is everywhere. <laughs> you can't get away from it. And why are these cyber criminals successful? Why are they able to steal our money? Well, take a look in the mirror. It's because of you. It's your fault. You are the vulnerability that's being exploited. In fact, 91% of the time, successful targeted attacks start with attacking people and not technology. Let's look at a few examples. In 2011, an email like this one was sent to an employee of an IT security company. You'll see there's a spreadsheet attached. The employee clicked on the attachment. That launched some malicious software that let the bad guys into that computer system. The attackers were then able to steal the intellectual property of that company. And another prolific attack these days called business email compromise, cyber criminals spoof emails to appear as if they're being sent from the CEO of a company. Those emails are directed towards the CFO or financial manager, and they're instructed to wire, in some cases, millions of dollars to some foreign account, many times under the guise of a secret project or acquisition or something like that. You might think, well, who's going to fall for that? That's, that's silly. Yet the FBI has put out statements saying that U.S. businesses have lost over $2 billion to this exact type of scam. Then we have something that all of us could potentially experience. Hopefully none of you have. Another scourge that the cyber criminals have unleashed recently is called ransomware. And this is a specific type of malware that when it infects your computer, it encrypts or scrambles all of your files and then holds them for ransom. If you have important documents and that's the only place they live, you're not gonna get them back unless you pay the bad guys hundreds of dollars. The thing that's in common about all of these attacks is that they don't work unless you help the bad guys. It required someone to click on that attachment, click that link, respond to an email. If the victim didn't help the bad guys, these attacks are not successful. So you may think, well, if I have firewall installed or security software installed, I'm safe, right? Well, no, it's not a silver bullet. Technology alone can't save you. It's more like your seatbelt. If you're driving down the interstate, you got your seatbelt on, but you're going 100 miles an hour trying to act like Dukes of Hazard, seatbelt's not going to save you. The same thing is true on the internet. So to really understand why technology can't protect us, you really need to understand how the internet works. So here's a diagram. But guess what? Nobody knows how the internet works. And that's part of the problem. It's too complex. There's too many pieces. It's changing all the time. And we just can't secure with technology what we don't understand. So I didn't come here today to try to scare you or have you go home and throw your computer out the window later. Uh, I came here to share with you some good news and some bad news. And so the bad news is that you are the vulnerability being exploited. But the good news is that means that you have the power to fight back against cyber criminals. So I want to leave you with three simple steps that you can take today to fight back. Step one, if you don't need it, don't use it. You probably get emails or pop-up ads or friends telling you install this program, install that, check that out, go to this website. Don't do it. If you have sensitive files on your hard drive, copy them off to a separate USB drive, some, some place where they're not plugged into the internet all the time. Step two, fasten your seatbelt for the information superhighway. Use antivirus software. Choose good passwords. Don't put them on a sticky note on your monitor. We've all heard all these things that we need to do to stay safe. Yet who can say they do them and do them consistently? You got to do them. Step three, be a little paranoid. The bad guys are exploiting our desire to be helpful. So stop and think. Be a little paranoid. Call the person that sent you that email and ask if they really sent it to you. You know, I get calls from family all the time. Hey, John, can you help me with this computer problem? Most of the time I say, well, press the power switch on, 
they're good to go, but occasionally I have to help them make sense of an email and figure out if it's legitimate or not. Take a look in the mirror. You are the vulnerability, but you also have the power to fight back. Thank you very much.